gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw. In other words, welcome to Peter Chow Games. In other words, welcome to Monday Night Raw as told by Peter Chow Games. We're in Green Bay, Wisconsin for episode one of the WWE Universe mode on WWE 2K17. And it looks like Rusev, the Bulgarian brute, is about to join us here at ringside one of the roughest and toughest guys in the business and he's also married to one of the most beautiful lana and let's see what the bulgarian brute has to say here tonight after losing last night to brock lesnar for the united states championship i have never been one to hold back when it comes to what i think nor am i the type of person to sit in the back and wait for my turn i've got a lot that i need to get off my chest and i don't give a damn who i offend who i'm set be it the superstars oh shit i forgot i la, 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 la. and wait a second here it's jack swagger swagger looking to put a little bit of salt in the wounds of rusev Y'all come to play tonight. Hell yeah. I love this energy right now. I've got to say. The WWE Universe is half the reason I came out. The other half is... Uh, I can't read that fast, guys. Bzz, bzz, bzz. You hear that? It's the sound of a bug. An in annoying, insignificant little insect trying to take a whole lot of noise. Thinking is better than it actually is. The problem with bugs when they run into actual men is... Oh, damn. I'm really not reading as fast as I should be here. But Jack Swagger, let's just get to the bottom of it. It seems as if Jack Swagger has an issue with Rusev. Wants to put a little salt in the wounds knowing that Rusev lost to Brock Lesnar for the United States Championship. And it was last night that that happened at Extreme Rules. Right here on Universe Mode. Universe Mode takes place uh, right after uh, WrestleMania. Uh, but I played a month uh, worth of WWE Universe be before really jumping into things and starting to record. But that's exactly where we're at now. Rusev says he doesn't have time for a jabroni like Jack Swagger. And I don't give him any flack for that because Jack Swagger has not been on television for quite some time. Neither on Universe Mode or in real life. A bit of shade being thrown here by Peter Chow to Jack Swagger. But Swagger thinks he is worth Rusev's time. I'm not entirely sure he is, and I'm not entirely sure the WWE fans think that either. And I think they're behind Rusev so far in this exchange, as his promo performance is very, very good so far. Actually, they're about neck and neck. It seems as if it's half half right now. Swagger winning a little bit, but Rusev pulling ahead. Oh, here we go. There it is. I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to let you walk out of here. You're getting a pass. You're welcome. Don't make me regret my generosity. And look, look at that. Rusev, just like that, wins the bout. Welcome back to Monday Night Raw. And it looks as if Roman Reigns will be taking on Titus O'Neil. The big deal, Titus O'Neil. Roman Reigns had a very successful night last night at Extreme Rules when he took that WWE World Heavyweight Championship away from Dean Ambrose. And this is where we're, boom, picking it up right here on Universe Mode. We're picking it up where Roman Reigns defeated Dean Ambrose for that WWE World Heavyweight Championship last night at Extreme Rules, and Roman Reigns looking to continue his reign, so to speak, even though this is a non-title affair, and test his championship defending capabilities, even though that I'm going to add this is a non-title affair. Roman Reigns continues to dominate the WWE here tonight as he takes on the big deal Titus O'Neil, who is an individual who we shouldn't be taking for granted. He's a big guy. Uh, he probably grew up on the streets of Harlem. I don't know that, but he might have. Not because of uh, the color of his skin. That wouldn't be a progressive thing to say or think or to have in your mind. But it looks like the WWE World Heavyweight Champion 
is going to put the rumors that he is not a good wrestler to rest here tonight. Green Bay, Wisconsin is the place for Roman to prove to the world that the Roman Empire is here to stay. And Roman Reigns getting ready again to face the big deal Titus O'Neil waiting in the corner here. And oh wow, Roman Reigns kicks it up aggressively. An elbow to the back of the head, a European uppercut, and a nice flying clothesline exploding out of the gate. Really taking the momentum that he garnered last night at Extreme Rules against Dean Ambrose for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And he's taking that momentum with them. But Titus O'Neil is not to be one who is going to be undermined by the Roman Empire. And it looks like Roman Reigns is not going to be undermined either. Elbowing his way out of that fireman's carry position and exploding into Titus O'Neil's face with that big clothesline. And it looks like these two are off to an explosive start on an explosive episode of Monday Night Raw so far. Rusev came out and Jack Swagger interfered in his promo time. And, and Rusev, of course, very angry about the results of last night's pay-per-view when he was unable to defeat uh, Brock Lesnar and defend successfully the WWE United States Championship. So he's out here, but obviously Brock isn't here because he doesn't have a contract to show up to events that he doesn't get paid for. He gets paid for, I, I would say he gets paid $5 million a year as a downside, and then he probably gets paid um, a nice guarantee per uh, show. And I guess he wasn't paid for tonight's show on WWE Universe mode. So it seems as if, and as Titus O'Neil delivers a huge running knee to that that noggin of Roman Reigns. And look at this. No. A stomp. Oh, my. Right to the midsection of Roman Reigns. And Reigns isn't going to look good here in this non-title affair if he lets Titus O'Neil get the best of him. And a nice borrowing out of Cesaro's playbook there. Titus O'Neil and Cesaro, good friends. And oh, my. Looks like he's good friends with the million-dollar man Ted DiBiase as well with that fist drop. But it looks like Roman Reigns is good friends with Kane with a nice uppercut to the throat, sending no O'Neal down to the ground. It looks like he's also friends with Mark Henry with that sort of headbutt. And now whipping Titus O'Neal to the to the short side and a little bit of a miscommunication as O'Neal sends Roman Reigns barreling out of the ring. But speaking of last night's Extreme Rules pay-per-view event, it was an electric one. Rusev unsuccessfully defending his United States Championship against a gentleman by the name of Brock Lesnar, who does not have a full-time contract with the WWE, shows up when he wants to. Now, here's the question. Why are we giving a guy, you know, who doesn't show up every week or wrestles you know, even five dates out of the 300 dates that other WWE superstars wrestle. Why is he holding one of the most coveted titles in the WWE in the WWE United States Championship? Why is he holding that gold? We don't know why, and it looks like the fans have just the right amount of questions for the right amount of answers that WWE has to provide. As Roman Reigns desperately wants the adulation from the WWE crowd here tonight. Reigns in a predicament here. He wants to show the world that he is not a one-trick pony. And tonight he's testing his championship defending abilities in a non-title affair against Titus O'Neil, who we have mentioned plenty of times is the real deal. Wait a second. Kicking. No, boy. Nice. Jumping off the top rope and again, really desperately seeking validation from the WWE fans here tonight on Monday Night Raw. And Roman Waynes. Roman Waynes. Nice headbutt there. And O'Neal continuing. Getting a little bit of barrage. 
by Roman Reigns, even though Wade Parrott is no longer in the company. And look at this. Roman Reigns continues to try to get crowd approval. And again, with the European uppercut, sending Titus O'Neil backing him up. And look at this. Oh, nice move there. You got to work on the... The, the, the lower back of Titus O'Neil, so he loses that upper body strength. If he retains that upper body strength, he can do a whole lot of damage on you. And look at this. Titus O'Neil now. And Roman Reigns going back and forth. A nice gut wrench. And that's a lot of upper body core strength by Roman Reigns being displayed here. And that's what a champion looks like, folks. Oh, nice move here. Nice move. Oh, we've seen this before. Nice move there by Roman Reigns. He deked us all out with what looked to be a roll-up. But he's a powerful specimen. And just from the ground is able to use his upper body core strength. Take Titus O'Neil for a ride. And it looks as if O'Neil miscalculating in the corner. Allowing Reigns to continue to build his momentum here on WWE Raw. This is an exciting universe mode this year on WWE 2K17 folks. And I'll tell you why. Roman Reigns and Titus O'Neil are not even a feud. Right now, Roman Reigns is in a feud with Dean Ambrose. But the reason why that, you know, last year we noticed in WWE 2K16 that every week it was just a different variation, a different one-on-one -on -one contest between the people that you were actually uh, enacted in, in, a, in a rivalry with. It would be... Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose week after week after week, but not this time, not this year, not WWE 2K17. We're having variations and we're having Roman Reigns, uh, you know, defeat, defend, fight against different people week in and week out with possible and variable involvement from the person he's actually feuding with. So that's a really nice change. And we're speaking too much as Reigns with a powerbomb for the victory. And it looks like the big deal is not really the big deal that he wanted us to believe that he is. Because Roman Reigns had no problems with defeating Titus O'Neil. Look at this. The Michinoku driver. That didn't do the job. This hit got the job done. Getting closer to getting the job done. And what really got the job done was this. Wait a second. That's not it. That's a bad replay. That's what that is. Yeah, there is. This is what it is. Boom. Just like that. It was almost a razor's edge into a powerbomb. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a supreme reign. And I'm not just saying that because his last name is Reigns. Well, I am. But you know how it is. Reigns with the victory here tonight on WWE Raw. Stay tuned for way more action as we continue to build to the next pay-per-view. Welcome back. It's Universe Mode still, and we're set for women's action, women's wrestling. What I like the best about the new era of the WWE and the women's champion, Charlotte, making her way to the ringside area. One huge problem with WWE 2K17, the video game this year, again, is the horrible commentary. And that's why we're cutting it all out and we're replacing it with my beautiful voice because I feel like I have a lot more offer than that canned stuff that the WWE continues to produce week in and week out. Not only in real life live action television on WWE Raw, but also what they're producing in the voice studios to get this game going. I don't get it. Why is the commentary so bad? Why do they still refer to some of the women? Some of the lines are actually still referring to the, to the wrestlers in the ring as men. Like, oh, he is so good, or, or he's amazing, or he did a great move. They're women, folks. Can you do the same lines with just she or something? That'd be nice. Alicia Fox with a nice... No, wait a second. Spoke too soon. Charlotte fought her way out of that one and turned that into a big nasty bulldog. 
A nice forearm to Alicia Fox, who didn't even get an entrance. That's how you know she's going to lose, folks. Look at that. Look at this. Using those big old shoulder blades as weapons. And now look at this. Alicia Fox trying to match some sort of offense, but it's clear to the viewers at home and the people sitting in the crowd tonight that Charlotte is the gal to beat. Look at this. Charlotte in complete control here. Oh my, going for a chop block early, and Alicia was able to avoid that one and gets that stinger slop drop right onto Charlotte. Doesn't go for the cover, which is very suspicious, but instead drops the Hogan leg on to Charlotte. Wait a second. Charlotte right back up. Pops up and Alicia says no. A DDT on Charlotte and a knee to the small of the back of the current title holder. The women's champion. And a nice body slam there by Alicia Fox. Dropping the stinky leg one more time. And I gotta say Alicia Fox's legs are not as thick as Charlotte's. Charlotte's got thicker thighs. So if Charlotte was to enable that sort of same maneuver on Alicia, it would hurt a whole heck of a lot more. But right now, Alicia Fox is focused. She's taunting in the corner. And, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, and look at this. Very nice. Oh, my. Snapping that head back. And Charlotte just absolutely down. Here goes, oh, wait a second. We thought that we would see this from uh, uh, Charlotte here, trying to get the legs uh, tenderized uh, into crispy chicken tenders, but no, wait a second, using the point of the knee, and I gotta say, when you use your joints as weapons, that's really when things are the most painful. Oh no, Ryback's gone, so I'm gonna take the move. Charlotte just almost took Alicia's jaw for a ride there. And look at this. This is a nice, hotly contested women's match. And Alicia Fox with a back suplex. Can she get it this time? Yeah, she does. Charlotte now in complete control. No way. Wait a second. Alicia Fox showing a little bit of life here. But Charlotte able to roll out like the veteran she is, showing that ring awareness, even though she has been in the WWE, at least on the main roster, for less time than Alicia Fox has been, but has already accomplished more. Alicia Fox is destined to be in the lower card of the women's division. And it's too bad, because Alicia Fox had a lot of Booker T in her. And I'm not saying that just because, again, the color of her skin, but because of that charisma, because of the axe kick, because of the moves that she employs every time she steps foot in the WWE. Charlotte again. Oh, wait a second. Avoiding that. Oh, very nice. Exploding out of the other side of the ring into... Oh, wait a second. What's going on? This could be the figure eight. Could be the figure eight, folks. If she can lock it in, Charlotte may be looking at another victory here tonight on Raw. Wait a second here. Oh, no. can I get it? No. And wait a second. The power of Alicia. The power of Alicia. And a nice haul, oh boy. A shot right to Charlotte's head there. And Alicia is going to take a breather. That's smart. Wait a second. She's having a tantrum on the outside. And whoa! Charlotte just tossed that booty from one side of the outside of the ring to close. Oh, my God. To the cl I was about to save him before I finished that point. Faster action than I can call it here. And into the barricade and into the post. And this is a violent match. And Charlotte continues to wear down Alicia. I don't blame her for this. Ali oh, Alicia is tenacious here. A nice maneuver again. Dropping the current title holder of the women's title. A cover. One. Oh, wait a second. Charlotte able to kick out. And that means a lot more damage needs to be done on Alicia's part. But Charlotte is the women's champion. She has been the women's champion. Oh, my goodness. Another kick by Alicia. Alicia really giving Charlotte more than she can chew off here tonight. And if and if Charlotte doesn't focus, she might lose a non-title match here tonight against one of the lower-tier divas. 
Oh, wait a second. The lower tier women in the women's division. Oh, my God. A neck breaker right on. Right on to Alicia. And Charlotte is one of the most impressive WWE women's champion that we have seen in quite some time. But Alicia is really showing that perhaps if she can defeat Charlotte here in a one-on-one -on -one non title match that we may be seeing her move up the ranks to eventually take on Charlotte for that women's championship but wait a second have I spoken too soon it looks like I have right to the hard cam and Charlotte oh Charlotte's got this one after the spear folks that's it Charlotte the current women's title holder is the winner of that one and my goodness, what an effort by Alicia Fox. She really tried her damn darndest. Stay tuned for more action. The Undertaker and Stardust are about to lock horns here tonight on Monday Night Raw. And there's that gong. How cryptic, how eerie. It doesn't matter how many times that I witness The Undertaker's entrance live every time it happens. I get goosebumps running up and down my spine. So imagine, I want you to imagine what the other superstars in the back are feeling when they sense that The Undertaker is about to approach the ring. Now, a little backstory on this universe mode match right now. The Undertaker has returned to full-time action because he feels that his body can still go. He is no longer about that one match a year WrestleMania paycheck fight. He is here 300 days a week for those big events. Or not 300 because he probably doesn't do house shows. But he's back in universe mode and he's back on Monday Night Raw. He used to be a staple of Friday Night SmackDown. Then Thursday Night SmackDown, and now Tuesday Night's live edition of SmackDown. But now, he's back on the flagship show on Monday Night Raw. And a little backstory about why Stardust is back into the fold of things. He decided that after pursuing the independence for a few months, that it wasn't enough money. It was He wasn't getting booked enough. Um, and his Cody Rhodes character was getting over, but the independence certainly did not pay as well as, um, you know, what WWE was paying him. So he decided to come back and, you know, really torment himself by going back to the Stardust character because Vince McMahon said, okay, we'll take you back, but you're going to be Stardust for life. That's what he said to him face to face in the back. Um, and, and here's the thing, Cody Rhodes wanted to be Cody Rhodes. But Vince said, Cody Rhodes is boring, folks. It's time for Stardust to come back, and that's why he's back. And he's facing the likes of The Undertaker, so he's got nothing to complain about. And it looks like Stardust off to a nice start. Oh my, pinning that, pinning that elbow down and stomping on The Undertaker, now dropping a knee. And Stardust doing a good job right out of the out outset of this match. And he's Pinning down The Undertaker. Wait a second. A stop coming. And he gets it. Right into the midsection of The Undertaker. And The Undertaker is not faring so hot right now. Up to the top very early on. No, he misses. And The Undertaker. Show him why he's the man. No, sir. Stardust taking advantage of the fact that The Undertaker was... You know, trying to validate himself in front of the crowd. A lot of superstars trying to do that right now. And wait a second. Oh, boy. The battle continues as Stardust is in trouble. And The Undertaker continues to battle away. At, oh, nice. Low drop kick there by The Undertaker. Really nice stuff going on right now. And The Undertaker... Whipping Stardust to the far side of the ring and now choking him with his damn boot. This has been an electric match so far, as you can see how it, it pretty much went from a one star to a five star instantly. A lot of the meat of the match was cut out for time, but that's okay because The Undertaker proving to the world right now what he's got to offer. He still has a lot in the tank. And right now he is really... 
sucking that wind, getting his stamina back, and getting his endurance back, because he needs that. If he's going to contest someone young and youthful and full of energy, someone like a Stardust, someone like a Cody Rhodes, then he's got to get back to the gym. He's got he's to run the treadmills. He's got to do his thing because if you're out of shape and you're in there with a young guy, a young guy will always get the better of you. I'll tell you that. And that's it seems as if Stardust is getting that. Oh, my. Getting the best of the Undertaker right now. And, oh, oh, nice. Oh, making the Undertaker bleed. He's busted wide open. And I'll tell you why, folks. Oh, the referee taking his time. Going to the outside. And is that... no? Oh, the Undertaker barely kicking out. Now, I didn't mention this was a Falls Count Anywhere match. I guess I found that out just now as I was playing this. But here's the thing. Is that Stardust is a young guy. He is a youth. And he's a full of energy type of fellow. And even though he's wrecked in a horrible gimmick that he doesn't want to be involved with at all. He's in the WWE for a reason. That's money, folks. You gotta pay your bills. And if you don't pay your bills, then you don't get to eat. And I gotta say, a Cody's gotta eat. And right now, it looks like Undertaker trying to take all the food away from Stardust by trying to make him submit to this deadly maneuver. No, nope. can he do it? Can he do it? No, nope. can he do it? No. Stardust able to, oh, punch his way out of that deadly crucifix. Or as the Undertaker likes to call it, a Hell's Gate. Wait a second. Oh, there's the Alabama Slammer by Cody Rhodes, Stardust, whatever you want to call him. But the Undertaker is not willing to stay down. Not for Cody, not for Stardust, and certainly not for anybody unless his name is Brock Lesnar. Especially not on the Monday Night Telecast. Well, that was weird what he just did. He just kind of jumped. I mean, I don't even know physically. That made sense. I'm, it's a head scratcher, and that's why you can hear me ha just scratch my head because, oh boy, not only because I have lice, but because that was a head scratching sort of physics defying maneuver by Stardust. And Stardust continuing to aim that knee right in the temple of the Undertaker. And the Undertaker down, bleeding like a stuck pig. And, and again, this is another example of one of those incidents in which a young competitor is giving mo the, the older competitor a little bit more than he could chew. And Stardust is ex doing exactly that. It's Halloween season, folks. And if you want to get your Stardust costume, go to WWE.com. Just kidding. They don't have any. Ropes, ropes, ropes. And he had to use the resiliency button. The Undertaker barely got out of that one. And now a suplex in response. Nope, Stardust getting out of it. And it looks like Stardust is coming back hot and heavy. And if he can defeat The Undertaker on the flagship show known as Monday Night Raw, then we got ourselves... Oh! Oh, boy. Did you see that? He just tripped on that, on those steps. And that's going to end up on Botchamania, no doubt, as... He tries to recover. I don't think he can recover from a, a gaff like that, Cody. He just tripped on those stairs. And now he missed with the drop kick. And I think that is going to lead to the end, folks, as, as the Undertaker with a spinning back suplex. It all started when Stardust fell. Oh, oh man, another botch. And I don't know what's happening now. The Undertaker is getting tired. You can tell he's tired. You can tell he hasn't been to the gym and you can tell that fatigue is really his biggest enemy right now. Perhaps going on the road full-time is not his thing. It, you know, maybe he should go back to the whole one paycheck a year sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, but here we go. He's up for the ride. A choke slam by The Undertaker. And I farted just now. I'm not sure if you picked that one up. But it looks like The Undertaker. He's... Oh, boy. There it is. Oh. Uh, and down goes Cody Rhodes. And there he goes. The Undertaker has had enough. He wants to go home as the, as the referee decides to hit his shin instead of the mat to count the three. The Undertaker with a huge victory. And I don't know what is next or in store. 
for The Undertaker. Because it's about to continue with another match. The main event, Cesaro taking on Sami Zayn. Let's get to it. Here we go. Wait a second, Finn Balor coming out. And wait a second, what is happening here? This is not, this has nothing to do with Finn Balor. Finn Balor, uh, just to catch you guys up on, on, on this, is embroiled in a huge rivalry with Cesaro. And Cesaro spinning like he's a, super, he's a Swiss Superman. And he finally got him on that second try after that first botch. But... Cesaro and, and and Finn Balor hate each other right now, but this has nothing to do with Finn. This is supposed to be Sami Zayn taking on Cesaro in a one-on-one -on -one match. And it looks like Finn's going to come out and ruin that for everybody, not only for the people sitting at home right now watching this on their YouTube computers, but also for the people sitting right here in the arena. Oh, my goodness, how disappointing, but it looks like Cesaro is going to fight back. But the referee might call this one off. There's a lot going on before the ring. And I'm not sure if Cesaro is fit to have a match after this. Oh, wait a second. Oh, nice counter. A DDT. And that's it. Looks like the main event has been canceled, folks. And let's take a quick look at some of the rivalries happening right now. Uh, we got... Oh my, a budding rivalry was started, uh, just taking you guys through sort of the weeks that, that that all of this has been happening. A confrontation at ringside. You know, Finn and Cesaro are not liking each other. Then there's a shocking attack. But when it came down to it, it seems as if the inflated ego wasn't enough. Because when Cesaro and Finn got into the ring, it was Cesaro that won. And now that bad confrontation continues to get hotter by the week. If we take another another look at one of our other rivalries, it was it was Rusev and Brock Lesnar, of course, at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, which we'll get to. You know, we went through an entire month that they went back and forth, but it was it was culminated in that United States Championship match that Brock Lesnar eventually won. But anyway, thanks so much for joining me. Universe Mode Episode One is complete.